Hello everyone. Today we are going to see a problem based on strain energy. Let us read the question on time. A portal frame ABCD has its end A hinged and end D with roller support. A horizontal force W is applied at D as shown in figure. Determine the horizontal deflection at D. In this question, a portal frame is given. In the point D, a horizontal load W is applied. We have to find the horizontal deflection in the point D. For AB and CD, height is given as H. For BC, the length is given as B. The moment of inertia for BC is 2I. Moment of inertia for AB is I. The moment of inertia for CD is also I. Now let us calculate the reactions in the frame. In this frame, in the point A, we are having a hinged support. In the point D, we are having a roller support. In the hinged and roller supports, there will be no moment. So in the points A and D, there will be no moment. Also, there is no vertical load acting in this frame. So the vertical reaction in the point A and D will be zero. No need to calculate and waste the time. In the point A, we are having a hinged support. In the hinged support, there will be two reactions, the vertical reaction and the horizontal reaction. We already know the vertical reaction is zero. So only we have to calculate the horizontal reaction. In the roller support, there will be only one reaction, that is the vertical reaction. But we already know the vertical reaction is zero. So in the frame, we have to find only one reaction that is the horizontal reaction in the point A. Let us assume the horizontal reaction is acting on the left side. If our assumption is wrong, later we can change. Now let us apply the rule. The summation of horizontal forces is equal to zero. In this frame, we are having two horizontal forces, HA and W. W is acting on the right side, so it will be positive. HA is acting on the left side, so it will be negative. Finally, we are getting HA is equal to W. We are getting a positive value, that means our assumption is correct. HA is acting towards left side. In this frame, we are having three different parts, AB, BC and CD. So, we have to split the strain energy formula into three parts. The first part for AB, the second part for BC, the third part for CD. So we have to make three sections for AB one section, for BC one section and for CD one section. For AB the limits for the integration will be 0 to H. For BC the limits will be 0 to B. For CD, the limits will be 0 to H. For BC, the moment of inertia is 2I. So instead of I, we have to apply 2I. 2 into 2, we will get a 4. Before making the sections, let us make the free body diagram. I have split the frame in the point C. You can see that I have made into two parts. In the point D, we are having a horizontal load W. This point load W is acting towards the point C in the anti-clockwise direction. Because of this load, a clockwise movement is created in the point C. The magnitude of the movement will be the horizontal load W into the distance H. We will get WH. This point load is acting towards right side. So we must have a point load in the point C. This point load should be acting in the left side, but the values will be same W and W. In this diagram, in the point C, we can make the reactions very easily. This load is acting towards left hand side. So this load should be acting towards right hand side. This movement is acting in the clockwise direction. 
So this moment should be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. In this way, we can make this moment and point load in the point C. The quantities will be same, here also W and here also W. But here towards right side, here towards left side, in the moments also, the magnitude will be same, WH and WH. But the directions only will be different. CD is acting in the clockwise direction, but CB is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Now let us make the sections. We know that we have to make three sections for AB one section, for BC one section and for CD one section. You can see that I have made three sections. Now let us calculate M1. For that we have to take moment about the first section. Up to the section we are having only one load that is W and the distance is X. So W into X we will get a WX. Here we will have some confusion whether negative or positive. Do not worry about the sign because in the formula we are going to square the values. When we square the negative values it will become positive. So no need to worry about a positive or negative sign. Now let us calculate M2. For that we have to take moment about the second section. Up to the section we are having one moment and a point load. This point load does not have any perpendicular distance. So we have to consider only the moment. So M2 is equal to WH. Now let us calculate M3. For that we have to take moment about the third section. Up to the section we are having only one load that is W and the distance is X. So W into X finally we are getting WX. You can see that M1 and M3 are same. If you want you can make the table but it is not necessary. For AB the starting point is A because we are starting the section from the point A up to X. So origin is A. For BC the origin is the point C. For CD the origin is D. We have already made the limits. For AB it will be 0 to H. For BC it will be 0 to B. For CD it will be 0 to H. Now we can apply the values of M1, M2 and M3 in the strain energy formula. Here these two integrations are same. So we can make any one of the integration and multiply by 2. Here 2 and 2 will be eliminated. We can take the constants outside. Here W square is the constant. Here W square H square is the constant. We can take outside. Now we can start integration. When we integrate X square it will become X power 3 by 3. When we integrate dx, it will become x. Now we can apply the limits. No need to apply the lower limit because it is 0. When we apply 0, the whole value will become 0. So no need to apply and waste the time. Only apply the upper limits. Instead of x, we have to apply h. Instead of x, we have to apply b. Here we can take the common values outside. W square H square by EA is common. Here we can take LCM. Here we have to multiply the numerator and denominator by 4. Here we have to multiply with 3. After making LCM we are getting 4H plus 3B by 12. Finally we are getting the strain energy U is equal to W square H square by 12 EA into 4H plus 3B. We know the formula for work done by the load of into load into deflection. In the point D, we are going to calculate the deflection. In the point D, we are having one load W. So for the load, we have to apply W. We know that strain energy U is equal to work done by the load. We can equate the strain energy and work done by the load. We can take W by 2 on the left side. Then we can cut this W and square and 2 and 12. Here it will be 6. Finally we are getting the horizontal deflection in the point D which is equal to WH square by 6EI 
into 4h plus 3b. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.